Hey everybody, so somebody asked me about the books that I have in my collection. So I figured I would uh, show you some of them. Now, as I mentioned in a previous vlog, I've had literally hundreds of nerd books and I've thrown out the vast majority. I'm down to like 28 now. So I'm just gonna go through a few that I kept. Some of them might be interesting to buy. Some of them I just kept for nostalgia. So anyway, just out of curiosity for people. So this is a book. The HTT Developer's Handbook. This covers the basics of the hypertext transfer protocol, the underpinnings of the uh, of the web. And you see that this book was uh, published. I guess I bought it when it came around 2003. This is actually one of my later books. I threw out a lot of older books, but this might be an interesting book because the HTTP HTTP protocol has not changed. And if you're getting into really low-level coding, this could be kind of interesting. You learn how the, how the HTTP protocol actually functions. So this is a cool book. Something that every coder should learn. Something called regular expressions. Every major language supports it. Java, PHP, Python, Ruby, c -sharp on everything. And regular expressions allows you to parse text like nothing else out there. It's pretty archaic looking. It's kind of like a, a language within a language. And yeah, regular expressions. This is one of these key skill sets every developer should learn, at least a little. You don't have to be a master of it, but you should understand the basics. And what regular expressions allows you to do, again, is to parse text. And it could be a very useful tool to have in terms of your skill sets. This is an older O'Reilly book. When was this printed? Yeah, this is the later edition, 2002. <laughs> so I'm sure they got later editions, but the regular expressions hasn't changed, so that's why I keep this. Ah, this is one of my older books, SQL Fundamentals, SQL Structured Query Language, the language of databases. This is a very hands-on uh, book. Where did I get this? Uh, it's right out here somewhere. 1999, 1999. Is it the 1999 printing? Yep, so I bought this, probably bought it in 1999. So this is a good book. I, again, I kept it because fundamentals of SQL hasn't changed. You know, I know my SQL pretty well, but you can get into, if you want to get into say inner and outer joints and stuff like that, it's kind of cool to have this. Um, well, this is my book. It's not old. This book I wrote in 2015. This is from a letter from the publisher and to me. And uh, this is actually a test printing. It was printed by this company here, Everest Printing Code in China. So, yeah, so this is a Chinese company that printed it. So, written in Canada, published in the UK, and printed in China. You can get this all over the US as well. It's still out there. Now I wrote this book to be evergreen, meaning, see that's the uh, UK edition. Um, I wrote this book to be evergreen, meaning that in five years, unless I'm wrong, what I cover in here will not have changed because unlike you know, 10 years ago and 15 years ago, the web technologies have not changed, they've sort of reached a level plateau now. They're very stable. HTML5 is HTML5, CSS3 is CSS3, basic bootstrap, basic bootstrap, basic JavaScript, etc., etc. So this book covers it. So if you're a total beginner, you can get the book now. You can get it very cheap on Amazon, highly reviewed. It's a nice thin book, gets you up and running. One of the reasons I wrote this book was it was helping me to plan out the new curriculum for Studio Web. Here's another old book, Head First JavaScript. This is one of O'Reilly's books that are very visual. I bought it because it was kind of interesting to look at. At this point, I, I knew JavaScript very well, but I wanted to see how they approached teaching it. And uh, so to me, again, these are all like my newer books. And this one was printed in 2008. So JavaScript book, one of the old thick ones, right? They used to be actually much thicker than this. And I have a similar type of book, Head First Design Patterns. Design patterns are basically 
a way to design your apps. And so I haven't looked at this book in a long time, so I'm not sure how relevant it is. But again, these are the latest books. I've thrown out so many books that are much older than these. Yeah, this one was printed in, two, this is a 2004 edition. And I bought that. Yeah, so it's been a long time. This is, again, if you wanted these books, you have to see if they have later versions. My JavaScript course covers just about everything that's covered in here in video format, interactive training, so it's better, I think. But, you know, if you like to read, this might be a good book. Yeah, but you might want to get the later edition of that. These are probably the next I'm going to throw out. So here's a classic book, Martin Fowler. This is like uh, refactoring is basically going through your code and optimizing it and making it better. This, this is a classic book, and uh, it's... I think it teaches with Java code. What was this particular? So it's a hard, hard cover. This is 1999. So yeah, 1999. So uh, yeah, this teaches you. It's all with JavaScript, but the techniques, in terms of refactoring techniques, they apply to any language. You can apply these principles. Although, if you're doing PHP, I think you could find PHP refactoring tutorials and courses and books. If you're doing uh, Python, you could probably find that as well. But this is the seminal book where I think it all came from. So I bought this at the time. Now, the book, this is actually a very important book. This is a later book. The original book I threw out, the original book is from the mid-90s where he talked about usability and stuff. So he takes it to a whole new level, this author, uh, Jacob Nielsen. And this book is a much later book. Yeah, 2010, so that's like a new book for me. So yeah, I kept this one, I threw out the old one because I knew the stuff. Now this book, I keep this book because of this, killersites.com. I did not write this book, but the author uh, passed on his website that represented this book to me back in uh, 1999 or 2000. I think it was 1999. So I keep it because, you know, it's just, you know, it's a personal thing. All the information here is totally irrelevant. It teaches old school designing, web design, and that we do not do anymore. But at the time, see, 1997, at the time, this book was like totally like, like groundbreaking. Like these are groundbreaking sites, these layouts. Trust me, at the time. And of course, he talks about here how one day we'll be able to use CSS. One day, but CSS, nobody, you know, didn't work back then. This was like a super advanced site at the time. So it's kind of cool. So I keep it again. It reminds me of my Ute back in the 90s. I had the first edition, I think it was 1996, the first edition. And I had many, many other books beyond that. I just threw them out. Something here. I used to write a lot for web designer magazines. And I had stacks of them. I only kept a few articles here. I just cut out, you know, segments, pages rather. So uh, yeah, here's an article. Oh, there's somebody you know, Stefan. Apparently I'm a CSS expert. So I wrote a little commentary here. Um, what else is there? So, yeah, again, I just sliced out pages because I didn't feel like dragging out his magazines. Here we go again, recognize my frog. Are teaching a little jQuery here. This goes back here, a little JavaScript here. Uh, more JavaScript. You know, these are, every month I used to submit course material to these guys, to Web Designer Magazine, published out of the UK. Um, here's like uh, the first page, your experts, boom, boom, boom. Looks familiar. So here I'm writing, Stefan provides third installment of this killerphp.com video tutorials. Anyone? So yeah, here it is. The old PHP, killer PHP techniques and tricks. So old articles I wrote. And uh, how to build a contact form to give you an idea how dated this is. Dreamweaver 8. <laughs> so I just kept a few of them, you know, and many more. Now here it is, uh, my frog again. So uh, that's it. People, somebody, at least one person said, hey, well, I'd like to see some of your books. Now, I threw out, like I said, the vast majority because they were too old. 
I still have about 28 books, but these are the relevant ones. Books that I have now are on, I bought some books on advanced game design with JavaScript because I was interested in that. I was curious to see what people are doing. And I bought some Python books, of course, because before I do a course, I like to research the latest and greatest, see what's out there besides what's on the web. So uh, yeah, now whether or not you decide to use a book, that's up to you.